Today's video is brought to you by Technically Not a Technician. In today's video I'll show you the changes that need to be made in the config files so that you're able to play Quake Arcade Tournament Edition, and I'll also show you what I did with my Glide files to make sure we have no video driver issues. This video is going to assume that you've already found, downloaded, and extracted the needed files from the chud file that can be found in MAME. If you haven't, please find the link to that DIY video in the description, and in the above link. This video is also going to assume that you have Notepad++ or something similar installed as it will be needed for the editing of the config files, and this video is going to assume that you've made backups of all of the files we will be editing. When binding in Quake Arcade almost everything is the same as in the standard PC game. However, you will find that some commands seem duplicated, as an A is added to some of the commands. I am guessing to indicate Arcade. If you're having an issue with a standard command like Attack, try adding the letter A in front of it. With that out of the way, let's talk about the issues that we have. Our first and largest is that the system crashes as soon as it boots. The second is, we're unable to start a game, unless we start one of the saved games that comes loaded on the software. The third is, the arcade unit tells us that we have an issue and we need to get an attendant. And the fourth, well that's going to be the prizes we win, and the ticket printer that issues some of those prizes in the form of tickets. That ticket printer is not connected and the arcade software is looking for it. Some of these issues can only be fixed if we manually edit the config files, others can be fixed, via the onboard controls that come with the arcade cabinet. Let's start with getting the software to boot. After you've got everything extracted, and in a root folder with a short name on your main drive. You should have a folder in your root called ID1. Inside this folder you're going to need to locate a file called quake.rc. Open Quake.rc and scroll down until you see Demo Cycle. Below Demo Cycle you should see a line that has Start Demo, AVIS, Backslash, LBE, Dot, AVI. We're going to need to put two backslashes in front of that, and in front of any other line that ends in Dot AVI. These Dot AVI files seem to make the software crash. Simply slashing them out prevents them from playing. I don't know why this makes the system crash. It could be a resolution issue, maybe an issue with the onboard video player. Unfortunately, I don't have the workaround that lets us both play the game and save the video playback, but preventing the files from playing lets the game continue to run. Now let's scroll up the same file and add some text. First I'd like for you to find the area that says, Unbind All. Under that, you'll see three lines that start with, EXEC, with two of those saying Config and Player 2. In between those two lines add the text exec space auto exec dot cfg. We need to add this so the software knows to look for an auto executable file. The next thing we need to do is going to sound a little crazy. We need to edit our default dot cfg file. I know we should never edit a default configuration file, but there are two lines of code that I believe are important to change. The first is a password, and I believe it's the ninth line from the bottom. Scroll all the way down, and remove all the text in between the quotation marks on the password section of the default configuration file. If you do this right, you should be left with, a, underscore, password, and empty quotes. You can also add your own password if you'd like. The next thing I've done is to add the line of code GCI Arcade 0. GCI stands for, Game Control Interface, and if I'm right, it's referring to the control panel. Because we don't have the GCI installed, the unit keeps telling us to get an attendant. By adding this code to the default configuration files, we've told the unit not to look for the GCI. I've added this code to line 155 of my default config file. The next thing I did was add my auto configuration or auto execute file. Please remember that this file will do nothing if you don't edit the quake.rc file as the system isn't looking for it. You're going to need to edit your file based off of the system that you're using. 
For example, I'm using a joystick to keypad emulator, called Anti-Micro, I'm using this setup as it gives me a larger compatibility availability to play more games. Because everyone is on different computers, all of our auto-executable files will be different, the important thing to do here is program each of your keys to function as you intend, and keep in mind that if you want to manage everything from your control panel, and not your keyboard you also need to configure the menu keys as well. I'll make a copy of my auto-executable file in the description so you can kind of see what I did. I think the items that I changed that stand out is in the joy keys. Each of these keys is being emulated to produce a keyboard key. But this software sees both the keyboard and the joy keys. Every time an unbound key is pressed the system prompts you to press F4 and bind it. I don't want that message so I've bound those keys to nothing. This way the unit stops sending that message every time I press a joystick key. Also, this is the area that you'll need to store your alias commands if you wish to use any. I am using some for the extra keys I've added on my control board. The next thing I did was to start the arcade software and configure a few items for the arcade menu. This is the area that I used to configure the printer and the prize. In short, with my keyboard connected, I entered the menu, navigated to the arcade controls. Moved through the first screens until I saw press attack for insta prize controls. When I see that I navigate to that selection and I press my attack key. You can configure this how you would like. I myself turned off the printer, then turned off all but one of the prizes, and I adjusted the one prize I had left so that it would give nothing but in-game coins, and I raised the amount that the single prize would trigger, to 10. After making those changes your system should save everything to the config.cfg file. If you're still having issues with items not saving after you've made changes in the Quake menu, then I would access the config file and the file titled config.old.cfg and see if either of them have the changes listed. If they do, and you're feeling froggy, you can always isolate those changes and transfer them to your default configuration file. Just make sure to remove the corresponding code in the default configuration file first and also know that when making changes to the default configuration file, you can have some unexpected consequences if you're not careful. The last thing I'm going to cover is the nglide files. Truth is I have no idea if I need these. These files were spoken about in GitHub. Again, see the link regarding extracting the needed files. That video goes more into where to get the needed software, and how to extract it. In short, Mills5, built and shared a decrypted Quake Arcade executable, and in his GitHub, it is recommended installing nglide, and then finding and copying three files to the root of the Quake Arcade software. These three files have to do with video drivers. All you must do is first install nglide. Once that is done go to your C drive, and search for glide. Your computer is going to take a minute, but when it is done searching it will find three Glide files. They will be, Glide.dll, Glide2x.dll, and Glide3x.dll. Simply copy each file and paste them into the root folder. After you've done all of this, you should have a working Quake Arcade Tournament Edition set up, without error messages, and the ability to start a game from the beginning as intended. Please take a minute and check out the sponsor of this video. BrightVPN is a great, truly anonymous way to view the internet. They don't ask for an email, they don't need your credit card. They simply help you surf the web from the security of a great VPN. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. Please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend. It really helps the channel grow.